Hi, this is Alex from Nuvius. When you create a native script app, you get a bunch of template code generated for you. If you're just starting out, some of this code might be a bit confusing to you. I'll show you how you can start completely from scratch without any existing code getting in the way. And while I think it's worth working with TypeScript because you're much more productive, I want to first show you a pure JavaScript example, then transition to TypeScript. Visit this link for a written version of this tutorial. Okay, let's begin. I'm going to create a new native script app called Lookma. That's short for Lookma No Templates. When you create a new native script app, it generates some code for you based on the Hello World template. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code to take a look at that. Here are all the generated template files. Now I know you're going to think this is scary, but I'm going to delete everything out of here except for the app resources folder. And we're back to square zero. So where do we begin? NativeScript is going to look for a package.json file. So that is what I'm going to create first. This file has to indicate the name of the app and the main starting point. Our main starting point is going to be app.js. So we need to create that file as well. This is where the application will start. So we need to reference native scripts application module. And we say application.start to kick everything off. However, the application also needs to know where it should start. So we need to indicate what the main module is. We've indicated the main module to be main page, but we need to create that as well because we don't have it. And as you might already know, a page consists of a JavaScript file and an XML file. So we need to create both of those. Let's start with the XML. We are defining a page. So we need to say page and a closing tag. On the page, we're going to have some kind of layout. I'm going to use a stack layout. There's other options you can pick, like absolute layout or doc layout. But I'm going to use stack layout, which is going to stack all the elements inside of it on top of each other. Inside the stack layout, I want to have a button that we're going to press. And the text is going to say tap. Don't forget to close your UI elements out because the application will crash otherwise. Then I'm going to add a label. And that's all my UI will consist of. Now, we need to hook into some events on the page. When the button is tapped, we're going to write something out to that label. So in the JavaScript code for main page, we need some kind of event handler to handle a tap. And we can go back to our main page.js. And here we can export a function called tap action. Now what do we want to show on that label? I'm going to do a similar example to the Hello World application. And I'm going to show a counter. And when the user taps, we're going to increment the counter. So how do we write everything out to a label? First, we're going to need an ID on that label so we can reference it by ID. And we're going to need a place where we can reference it. And a good place to do that is on the page loaded event. When a page is loaded, it's going to trigger a loaded event. And we're going to hook into it. So in the main page.js, I need to also define a page loaded event. In the arguments passed to this function, we're going to have the page itself. And since that label that we need is on the page, we can grab it by ID using this function called getViewById. And a page has that function. And the ID is the same that we've assigned to the label in the XML. Let's go ahead and get that label out of the function scope. So we can use it in the tap action function. When the user taps on the button, we want to increment the counter and we want to update the label's text property. And it looks like we're done. Let's go ahead and run the app. And as you can see, we have our button. When we tap it, the label updates to the number of taps. Now it's a little bit ugly, so let's apply a little bit of styling to it. When the app starts up, we have an option to specify a CSS file. Application.css file equals app.css. 
and we're going to create this file called app.css right in the root here. We want to apply some basic styling. So stack layout is going to have text align property to center. That's going to go ahead and center all the elements in the stack layout, the button and the label. Now the button itself, let's add a little bit of styling other than default blue. Notice how I'm not specifying pixels. If you come from the web development world, you might specify pixels or EM for these values, border width, width, but in native script, you don't specify pixels or any other units here. I also want to give that label a class of its own, and we can indicate the class in the XML. Let's go ahead and rerun the app and you'll see the styling applied. And there we go. Now let's jump right into the TypeScript version of this and see how it can help us out. The first thing I'm going to do is organize this a little bit better. I'm going to create a separate styles folder and put my app.css in there. I'm going to delete my JavaScript main page.js file and rename my app.js to app.ts for TypeScript. Let's use the import statement here. Now you can see that it's underlined in red. That means Visual Studio Code is complaining. And that's because we haven't installed TypeScript yet. So let's install TypeScript. As you can see, TypeScript was installed and everything is fine now. I'm going to call my main page start page instead. And I'm going to put it in pages, start, start page. Also, since I'm here, I'm going to change the location of my CSS file to styles app.css and we're done with the app.ts file. Now I need to create pages and start and two files in here, startpage.ts and startpage.xml. I'm not going to bore you with typing out the XML again, so I'm just going to paste that in. As for the startpage.ts, if you were to think of this as an MVC application, this would be the controller. So I'm going to create a class called startpageController. It's also going to have a private variable called counter. I'm going to set that to 42 right away. And remember, we also need a label, and that's going to be of type label. Label is a native script widget that we need to import. Our class needs to have a public page loaded function and a tap action function. This args argument is actually of type event data, which also can be imported, this time from the data observable module. Now, because we're using TypeScript and we've strongly typed this args argument, now we get this IntelliSense. What we're looking for is this object. And in this case, we've attached the page loaded event to the page. So this object is going to be the page. We also want to get IntelliSense on the page class. So let's import page from UI page. Now, a little trick you can do here is if you see multiple import statements from UI slash something, you can combine them all onto one import statement. Now our page variable is strongly typed as a page. So we need to get a reference to that label that's on the page. And as you can see, we're going to have the get view by ID pop up with IntelliSense. This will return to us a label. But it's going to complain because get view by ID returns a view and we need to cast that to a label. Now, when we click that button, we want to also increment the counter and we want to update the label's text property. Now that we're in TypeScript, we can use the ES6 string templates to help us out here. Great. Our controller is complete now. All we need to do is just expose its functions. And we are done. Let's run the app. As you can see, it works exactly the same. This tutorial wouldn't be complete if we didn't take advantage of observables, which is a very powerful feature in native script. We don't want to keep getting references to views like this. This is going to get very messy. What we want to do is just bind the text property of the label to an observable property. So instead of this ID here, I'm going to say text equals binding syntax is double curlies with the property name inside. 
in order to have support for properties like this, my controller needs to inherit from the observable class, which is part of native script. And we're going to import observable from data slash observable module. I no longer need this reference to the label itself. What I do need to do is every time that button is clicked, I need to set the message property so the label can be notified that the message property changed. I also want to make this tap action observable. This handler can be observable as well. So I can get rid of this line down here that exports the tap action. Now the key to making all this work is the page needs a binding context. And the binding context for the page will be the controller itself. So we see page.bindingContext equals this. So when we bind these handlers and properties, it's going to bind directly to this observable instance, which is the start page controller. Let's run the app again. Everything works as normal. So as you can see, you don't have to be afraid of building native script apps from scratch. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please visit newvs.com slash blog for more written tutorials, tips and tricks, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more video tutorials.